Hello and welcome to the surgery topic, ulcerative colitis. This is part of a two presentation, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. This topic is about ulcerative colitis. Let's start off with a few questions. What is the hepatic flexure? It is between the ascending colon and the transverse colon. It is where the colon curves into the next portion of the colon. Which of the following is an anti-inflammatory cytokine? Interleukin-10. An anti-inflammatory cytokine will inhibit the synthesis of interleukin-1, TNF, and other major pro-inflammatory cytokines. The cecum is an intraperitoneal blind ended pouch in the lower abdominal cavity. Where is it usually found between? The allium and the ascending colon. In this presentation, we'll be talking about ulcerative colitis, the pathophysiology, history and symptoms, clinical examination, investigations and differential diagnosis, management and surgery. UC is an idiopathic chronic inflammatory disorder of the GI tract affecting the colorectum. It's most prevalent in the Caucasian population and has a bimodal distribution of 15 to 25 years and 55 to 65. Males and females are affected equally. Remitting and relapsing course and positive family history of IBD is a strong risk factor and smoking is protective against UC. However, do not advise your patient to start smoking or to continue smoking as the harmful effects of smoking are still higher. For the pathophysiology, it is a multifactorial polygenic disease as the exact etiology is unknown. Current theories suggest it develops as an interaction between genetic and environmental factors. It's characterized by diffuse continual superficial inflammation of the large bowel beginning in the rectum and spreading proximally. Histological changes include inflammation of the mucosa and submucosa only, crypt abscesses, goblet cell hypoplasia, and repeated cycles of ulceration and healing leading to pseudopolyps. UC can be divided depending on the region affected. Proctitis, which is confined to the rectum, proctosigmoiditis, rectum and sigmoid, distal colitis, up to the splenic flexure, extensive colitis up to the hepatic flexure, and pancolitis affecting the whole colon. Some patients with pancolitis may have involvement of the terminal island due to incompetence in the ocecal valve, and it's sometimes difficult to distinguish between UC and isolated Crohn's disease. These patients can be described as having indeterminate colitis. This is an image showing you the types of ulcerative colitis. The histological differences between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are shown. The site, ulcerative colitis is restricted to just the large bowel and Crohn's is the entire GI tract. UCA involves the mucosa only and Crohn's is transmural. UC has crypt abscess formation, reduced goblet cells and non-granulomatous and Crohn's has granulomatous. Ulcerative colitis has continuous inflammation, pseudopulps and ulcers may form. However, Crohn's disease is discontinuous inflammation with skip lesions, cobblestone appearance, and fistula formation. For the history and symptoms, it can be confined to the rectum, which could mean rectal bleeding, bloody diarrhea, discharge, increased frequency, urgency of defecation, and tenesmus. More widespread colonic involvement, bloody diarrhea, dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and systemic symptoms. So the extraintestinal features are MSK, again, arthritis, erythmenodosum, episcleritis, anterioritis, iritis, and hepatobiliary, primary sclerosis, and cholangitis. The true love and wit criteria. It is used to measure the severity of an exasperation can be, can be graded using this criteria. And the severity degree is based on the presence of any one of these. Bowel movements per day, blood and stool, pyrexia, pulse, if it's more than 90, 
anemia and ESR. For the clinical examination, you want to see if they are systemically unwell, pale, dehydrated, tachycardic, hypotensive, are their abdomens tender? And if abdominal tenderness is associated with abdominal distension, then acute admission to hospital is required, as the patient could have a toxic mecocolon, which is potentially fatal. Other warning signs of potentially severe disease include tachycardia, fever, and anemia. For investigations, you want to do an FBC to check for anemia, CRP, LFTs, INR, and fecal calprotein with a stool sample. Some of the imaging is a colonoscopy with tissue biopsy. You can do a flexible sigmoidoscopy, abdominal x-ray, and CT. Colonoscopy is not to be done in acute attacks due to risk of perforation. For your differentials, they could be Crohn's, chronic infections, colorectal cancer, IBS, mesenteric ischemia, or celiac disease. For your management, suspected IBD, refer to a GI consultant for confirmation and initiation of treatment. Acute attacks, fluid resuscitation, corticosteroid therapy and immunosuppressive agents, and NICE guidelines outlining a step rise approach so that way you can guide yourself and not miss a step. For a surgical approach, the indication if they're not responding to medical treatment, if they have complications, or reduced risk of colon cancer. As you see, it's confined to the colorectum, a total colectomy is curative. And the usual approach is restorative protocolectomy with ileal pouch anal anastomosis. Yet patients will often initially undergo subtotal colectomy with preservation of the rectum. Let's summarize with a few questions. Which of the following is not a feature of UC? Cobblestone appearance. Cobblestone appearance is a feature of Crohn's. Which of the following would you expect to find on an abdominal x-ray of a patient with UC and the history of bloody diarrhea and abdopain and is peritonitic and tachypneic? Tachy Toxic megacolon. This patient has most probably had perforation following a flare of their UC. And which of the following is not part of the true love and weight criteria? The answer is CRP. ERSR is used in the criteria, not CRP. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.